So, Eric. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, introduce us to, uh, to our callers so we know who we'll be talking to. Huh? So, we have Waleed Shobat and his son, Theodore Shobat of Shobat Ministry, Shobat.com. Um, where, where I have some similarity with them is, is having uh, a lot of issues with Islam, being anti-Islam. Where, where I really take issue is <clears throat> I, I consider them to, within the world of, of what's commonly called counter-jihad, uh, or what I would think of as just anti-Islam, um, I would consider them to be part of our lunatic fringe, um, because a lot of what they're putting out is, is what I would call Christian hate. For example, the idea that God wants his followers to execute homosexuals, to execute witches, things of this nature, that they're calling for a one-world theocratic uh, Christian government that everybody <clears throat> must um, submit to. Things of this nature are not only out of step with mainstream Christianity, but in my mind, just loony and, 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 and on a moral and, and legal level, I'm concerned that they're potentially inciting violence. Um, so I wanted to discuss that. And when I had mentioned some of my differences to Theodore Shabbat, he said, name the time and place, I'll debate you. So here we are. Here we are. Welcome to the show, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you for uh, <clears throat> accepting the offer of debate. You came onto uh, the Facebook page and you made your, uh, your intentions or your beliefs about us very clear. You don't like the fact, though, even though we are against Islam, uh, we are preaching Christianity, Christian views, Christian virtues and precepts. And I, I know that you have a problem with that. You want us Christians not to, to be, no, you want us Christians to talk about Islam, but you don't want us Christians to talk about Christianity. And I think that this is, I, I think that this is, uh, it's really uh, silly, to be honest with you, because Islam, if you ever read uh, <clears throat> anti-Islamic literature, uh, you, you may be thinking, when you hear anti-Islamic literature, you may be thinking Robert Spencer, you may be thinking Pamela Geller or whatever. No, when I talk about anti-Islamic literature, I talk about uh, books that were written against Islam when Islam was a very, very, very new cult, a sect. Theodore Abukura, Peter of Maimuna, uh, you have John the Deacon. These were some of the earliest, St. John of Damascus, some of the earliest anti-Islamic writers uh, in Islam's history, in the history of counter-jihad, if, if I can use the term that way. And they were all Catholic. They were all Christian. Why is the question? Well, Islam was not founded to go against secularism. Islam was not founded to destroy atheism, or uh, it, it wasn't even founded to destroy Buddhism or Hinduism. It was founded explicitly to destroy Christianity. Muhammad was a pagan. He was born a pagan. But he converted to Arianism. Arianism is the 4th century uh, heresy that teaches that Jesus Christ is not divine. And what did Muhammad say? He, came, he said that he came to destroy all those who believe that God is begotten and he begets. That God has a son and that the son is divine. Muhammad came to destroy this belief. In fact, he even came to destroy the veneration of the Virgin Mary. That's why in the Quran, it says that when Isa, or Jesus, ascended up to heaven and met with Allah, Allah said, O oh Isa, did I tell you, did, did you command your followers to worship your mother Mary? And Isa said, no, 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 Lord forbid, I never did such a thing. So Muhammad even went against the veneration of the Virgin Mary. He went against also the worship of Jesus Christ as the Son of God and as uh, as and as divine. So he so Islam came to destroy us Christians. He came to destroy Christianity. And so here I am, a Christian, and I'm sitting here saying I'm going to defend my faith against these barbarians, these savages who want to kill Christians and destroy Christianity. And Eric Allen Bell comes over and says that he has a problem with that. And then he paints us in a very general brush without any quotes. He just says, these guys this, these guys that, these guys want to do this, these guys are fringe, they're fanatic, blah, 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 blah. 
Well, let me remind him and remind you that what we believe in was exactly what the United States believed in, you know, until of recent, of course, that secularism took a hold of this country and people don't believe in fighting homosexuality and all that stuff, but it's not the topic of the night. However, just to brush us off like that and say, these guys want to kill witches, we're not going to let up like that, you know, this doesn't make any sense. Uh, you have to that's give true. That's why. You have to give quotes. We can have the conversation. Where's the quote? What quotes do you have, have against us? What you gentlemen are saying? Well, you, um, you just I, generally... I feel that you're slightly mischaracterizing what I'm saying. I post things on my own Facebook page about Christians being persecuted. I have no problem with you being Christian and, and supporting your faith. Yes, you do. And being yes, you do. about the very real fact that <laughs> Islam is targeting, among other things, Christianity, certainly Judaism. First and foremost, yeah. atheists, Hindus, um, that's very real. What I object to is that you're using that that um, to bring people to Shabbat ministry, and then you're preaching hate. You're preaching that we should, for example, execute homosexuals. What's the quote? Should, Give us the no, quote. No, 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 no. no, no. Christian law worldwide and force people to it. I'm not even sure I would call that Christianity. It's certainly out, out of step with mainstream Christianity. It, it's a it's a it's a fringe Christian hate group that you guys are running. Um, then, uh, I mean, let, let me just ask you an honest question. I mean, just I mean, just between us, guys, you guys don't actually believe this bullshit, right? I mean, <laughs> excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. If, 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 since you've cussed, I think it's also okay for us to, to share some language as well. If anyone is full of shit, it's you, Eric Allen Bell, because uh, obviously you don't know anything about Christianity. You wouldn't know Christianity if Jesus Christ himself met with you. You wouldn't even know Christianity. But how do you know the that? New, shh, be quiet. Let me finish. You've insulted me. You, you've, now you've used warring words now. If you no, ever read about Christianity, you would know that you're full of crap. Because in the New Testament and in the Old Testament, execution for homosexuals, for homosexuality, is taught and uh, permissible only by a government, by a state, or by people who are called by God. Which you forgot to mention. In the book of Genesis, it says that God himself destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. And he, God, appears as a man. He is the son of God in Christian theology. You read Thomas Aquinas, you read Gregory, you read uh, 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 um, uh, Justine Martyr. All of the most, top, some of the most pr pr formidable, prominent Christian scholars in Christian history. And also when you read in the book of Romans, it states that the sword that is held by the ruler, not in vain, to put the wicked to death. And St. Peter himself says that the government is established by God to punish the wicked and to reward the just. And in 1 Timothy chapter 2, it says that the law is not made only, is not made for the just, but for the unjust, for blasphemers, for murderers, for kidnappers, for people who steal people to sell them into slavery, and for homosexuals. So don't come in here ask telling me that I don't know anything about Christianity. You don't know anything about Christianity. And it's obvious to me that you've never really spoken to a real Christian. Really? I don't think, I, no, I, obviously you haven't because you don't know what the hell you're talking about. And also, you sit here talking about, oh, we got to keep counter jihad secular and all this crap. Let me, let me ask you some questions. Yeah. Have you ever heard of Don Juan of Austria? Have you ever heard of Don Juan of Austria? I'm sorry, what? Have you ever heard of Don Juan of Austria? Don Juan of Austria? Yes. He know. was a man who defeated the Muslims with the sword in the Battle of Lepanto. Read about it. 1565 battle. Defended Europe from being invaded. He was a Catholic. He believed in the Catholic faith. Unlike you, he believed in the Catholic faith. And if you lived in those times and you went, hey, Juan, John, don't, don't bring up Christianity. You're, you're, you're a hate group, John. You shouldn't talk about these things. We got to keep it secular. He'd smack you across the face and throw you in the water. To be, to be fish food. Have you ever heard of Sancho Garces? Spanish warrior who fought on the Reconquista. Maybe you should read about that as well. 
Have you ever heard of so Pope Urban? Pope Urban the Second was a Catholic system. pope. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. The real counter jihad. Right. We so, the real so, counter jihad so, is the Catholic faith. Where we don't put each other down. Hold on. Excuse me. Who was insulting who? Who was insulting? I was respectful for you until you started insulting my religion, insulting my faith. So here, so go ahead. Go ahead. Talk. Go ahead. Bark. Go ahead. Bark. 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 Correct me if I'm wrong here. What you're saying is, when I'm saying that I object to something for... Hold on a second. Please give them, like, this is a bad thing. Give feedback. Yeah. Um, can you turn the volume up? No, it's not. It's, it's just the line itself. Yeah, I know. It's, yeah. It's, it's, that, can you guys call us back on, on the same number? Yeah, Please. we'll give you a call back in a few seconds. Thank you. Call again. Okay, can you guys hear us? Can you yeah. hear us? We can hear you. Let's make sure that we don't have any echo. I think we're fine. All right. It sounds good. Yes. All right, we're good then. Let's continue, please. Um, I was going to respond to something Peter said, if that's okay. Go ahead. Um, I think you're mischaracterizing my position. I am not demanding that you become secular or that you hide your faith or not be Christian. That's absurd. What I'm suggesting is your brand of Christianity that calls for the execution of homosexuals, as an example, or a one-world legal system of forced Christianity, strikes me as extreme. Forced? Extremist group, that you're extremists. And so much of this really resembles Islam. You know, if, if you come to an Islamic country, and you know this, uh, and you're unwilling to accept Islam, you have to pay the jizya, the, the non-Muslim uh, tax. Theodore was on YouTube basically saying the same thing about Christianity. So much of what you're saying really is essentially, it's Christian jihad, it's essentially Islam, but you slap the name Christianity on it. Yes. Would you call? Would you call then uh, uh, Lord Allenby, who fought the Ottoman Empire, pursuing Christian jihad when he defeated the Ottoman Empire? Perhaps. I'm the, not on the radio with that person right now. I'm talking to you. Well, yes, but you said that you, you equated Christian defense against Islam. By the way, it's not only terrorism. Christians have been combating Islam since Islam since the inception of Islam, 600s, when they invaded Syria, and after that, Egypt, and after that, you know, Constantinople, and all these countries. Uh, I think purposefully changing the subject. I have no issue with Christians defending themselves against Islam. I don't know how much more clear I can be. That, that's what we're talking see, but you, about. But you see, but you see, you say that we're misinterpreting you, and that you are saying that, uh, that you're simply... You're simply against our brand of Christianity. And what I'm saying is that our brand of Christianity, it's not our brand. It's actually the Catholic faith, regardless of how we Catholics have become today or how much uh, modernism has infiltrated the Catholic Church. What we preach, what we teach, or what I believe, what I subscribe to, what I express, is in accordance to true Catholic doctrine. And everything I say can be found in the Catholic teachings, be it in St. Thomas Aquinas, be it in Robert Bellarmino, be it in, uh, you, you look at some great writings like, uh, like Isadora of Sevilla, St. Augustine, all of these great writers of the Catholic faith, they agree with what I'm saying. Now, you. now you are, now you don't like the fact that I'm saying that homosexuals should be put to death. Listen. No, I don't. I, of course you don't. Homosexuality is disgusting. It is evil. It is demonic. And it is essentially, as uh, St. Robert Bellarmino said, homosexuality is a declaration of war against the natural order. Eric, I know very well that you came from a woman. I know very well that you are here as a product of the conjugal union between man and woman. You are not here as a result of two men sodomizing each other. No civilization, no civilization is ever born from homosexuality. All civilization is born as a result of a man and a woman having sex, the conjugal union between man and women. And homosexuality says, oh, no, 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 that's not true. Oh, no, 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 
uh, uh, two men can get married. Oh, two men can have a baby. Oh, it's no different than a man and a woman. That's a load of garbage. Homosexuality is evil. It is evil. It is demonic. They're, they're, they're saying this crap all the time. They say, oh, we can have a, we, we can have a, a, a baby by, um, I forgot the name. But basically, it's like a turkey baster baby. They, they, they hire a woman. They get her pregnant with some sperm. And, and they say, oh, uh, uh, that's our child. And they, and they give the child to the two men as though it's the same thing. Well, it's disgusting and it's diabolical. And so is... Yes, I believe so, because they have made a declaration of war against that which brings birth to humankind. P see, people, people are so sick. Do, do you know? Do you know? I find it so amazing. We have homosexual activists in the Western world who are saying some of the most diabolical things that you can imagine. The, the absolutely demonic, tyrannical, despotic things. And you have nothing better to do than attack us. Let me let me give you some examples. How come you guys never said anything about, let's say, Jim McKnight, who is a, a homosexual activist, who says that homosexuals are superior to non-homosexuals? And he believes that there is a homosexual gene and that people are genetically superior because they have this gene. None of you guys would ever mention this kind of stuff. What about... Um, Rusem, who was another pro-sodomite writer, who says that the existence and persistence of homosexuality is a function of superior heterozygote fitness, Naziistic, eugenist ways of talking. Or let's see, I, I, there was an actress, Lisa Kudrow. She says homosexuals are superior beings. That's, that's, that's actually a very valid question, Theodore. The reason why I'm not on the radio arguing with any of those people is I feel very strongly that the way to combat the Islamic agenda is that uh, we live in a media-driven world and that the information age can potentially kill Islam. And when I see that I You're am changing the subject, yeah. associated with people who are running a Christian hate organization, it, it's clear to me that do you hate what this guy said? And so do you hate, do you hate what these people say, though? Do you... Oh, yeah, 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 okay. Unless you criticize the Islam, we're perceived to be expressing hate. So we always have an uphill battle. Once we get past that, then we're judged by the company we keep. And so we're perceived to be connected to these right-wing, rapture-ready, end-times people. Waleed Shobat is a very prominent person in what is called, by some people, the counter-jihad movement. By the opposition, they call it the Islamophobia movement. So I don't want to be associated with that. We don't and, care. And, and we don't care. It's not our problem. Is, is, is because I really feel that you're actually advancing the Islamic agenda. Okay. You're advancing the Islamic agenda because you're so you're you're so loony tuned that you're hurting us. You're discrediting oh. the rest of us who really are deeply concerned about human rights and mm -hmm. human rights. the fact that Islam poses to human rights. What, what about that sodomite Michael Savage saying that he would uh, put enforced population control? And I hear none of you guys say that. Yet you have no problem. Idea. Yeah, of and course, because you're a Nazi. You know, now, you think your version of Christianity, how do you think that's so different from Islam? Now... It, oh, hold on. She's asking a question. How do you think the form of Christianity is different from the form of Islam? Ma'am, the Islamic world declared thousands of battles against Christians. Okay? They began to outroot Christians from the beginning. And they began to invade Christian lands. Christians didn't go invading Muslim lands. So you compare Christians with Muslims. This is what you're doing. You're saying the, the Christian warfare or the Christian counter-jihad in a physical warfare is very similar to Islam because it has warfare. This is like saying Americans fighting Nazism with warfare is similar to Nazism's warfare. No, I'm talking about the ideology. Yeah, but that, what about the ideology of Islam? Look, 
You can you can try to fight the ideology of Islam all you want. It's an issue of it's it's not. It's, no, actually, it's, it's not. not. We're not talking about just what you guys are doing, just countering jihad on the media. Christianity or the or the West didn't defeat Islamdom by countering them on the media alone. They defeat Islamdom the through media an, is new. the media is new. Well, the, are you are you kidding me? There was media from the beginning of the inception of the printing Books, press. Books, talk, words. England had media against printing Catholics, press. printing printing presses printing against Spain. Media. You know, there was media. I could show you media warfare. But, there was no. It's that, not fairly recent. Media warfare has been going on since the printing S press. Saint John Damascus wrote books it's against Islam. Well, it's only been recently that people are getting onto Facebook on their phones. So what you're saying is that we need to evolve and ourselves in accordance to the media. My very anti-Islamic Facebook page reached 9.2 million people. And our website reached how many millions? <laughs> how, how many millions did Shubot.com reach? So what's your point? Media matters. Media is how we change minds. Uh, more than swords, I think. No, and I'm not opposed to violence or warfare when it's appropriate. But in, in this country, we seem to change minds through media. It works. Social media definitely changes minds. I think that um, we, we can really succeed in shifting how Islam is perceived by using media. It doesn't mean you can't be and you have to be secular. But I have to be pro-homosexual. media is our best bet, but when people like me get associated with people like Walid, it, it, it sort of... So let, let's see what you want here. What you want here... We never knew who you were. It's my message. What you want here is to silence the Christians like us, and only your form of counter-jihad, which is only media, by the way, your only form of counter jihad, just speaking on Islam, besides that evil is evil, I mean, evil is evil, what Theodore quoted you was absolute Nazistic superiority complex. Homosexual. Evil. So, in other words, okay, go ahead. Nazism. Uh, no, to answer your question, no, I don't think only my form works. There are people who are far more effective than I am. At no, 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 no but, you, but you're, avoid, you're avoiding my, 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 you're avoiding what I'm saying. Strengths and weaknesses. I've never written a book. You're avoiding what I'm saying. Yes, but Pamela Geller says the LGBT is the best is the best partner. Uh, Pamela Geller says the LGBT has been the best partner in countering is yes, the jihad. And she also says. Do you that believe that the LGBT is the best counter jihad movement? Well, she says a lot of screwy things. Do you believe that? Well, I didn't ask if you agree. Do you agree with what she said? I'm just saying we all have different strengths. We all have different weaknesses. All right. We can do this the easy way. only right way. All right. We can do this the easy way or the hard way. Do you agree that Pamela Geller, when she says the LGBT movement is one of the best counter jihad, she basically says that. Do you agree? Yes or no? I would, I, I'm not aware of her saying that, but if she did, I would... I think that's a rather ridiculous... Why? Why? Why is it ridiculous? Why is the LGBT not counter jihad? Well, you know, you're talking about the left, yeah. and the left, you know, they're so oh. critical. They say we're all about human rights, and yet they won't stand up against the worst human night, human rights nightmare in history, which is Islam, which we probably agree on. on so, so why, why is the LGBT left? Why is the LGBT left, not right? Because they feel like that's where they can take refuge. That's where they're not going to be judged. That those are the people who are going to be compassionate to them. All right, then answer me this question. Why was the Nazis standing by the Muslims? Because they have the same agenda. Why is all the evil agenda together, holding hand in hand, united? And what are they united against? What was Hitler united against? He was united against the Judeo-Christian ethics. He was united against the Old Testament. He was united against the Jews. In fact... Oh, he, oh, yeah, he he was. The people who were tearing out Hitler's work were either Catholic 
That's a load of crap. Hold on. Yeah. Okay, that's go a, ahead. That's a load of garbage. That's... See how, see how see, fast you see how fast. So, so here, 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 here's an interesting concept. Yeah, yeah, please, please. Here's an interesting concept. Uh, Hitler, the Muslims... You know, I, hold on. Let me let me talk. Let me. I let you. I let you spout your bull crap. I let your. I let you spout your crap. Let me finish now. Pope Pius the Twelfth was an individual. He rescued more Jews than any other individual during the Holocaust. And if you think that I'm wrong in saying that, well, you're gonna have to. Con, you're gonna have to contend. Against Rabbi David Dahlin, you're going to have to contend against Pinchas Lapid, Herbert Wolf, Golda Meir, Albert Einstein, Ronald J. Richlack, Joseph L. Lichen. You're going to have to contend against all of these historians who uh, who have recounted and have documented that the Catholic Church was responsible for rescuing around 800,000 Jews. Now, while the Muslims were working with the social Darwinists, because the Nazis were social Darwinists, go read the writings of Alfred Rosenberg, who was the head ideologue for Nazi ideology. Go read his works. What was he? Pro-Protestant, Lutheran, pro kafar Gnostic, Albigensian, and he was also a pagan. And he also believed in the occult, and he hated the Catholic Church and the Old Testament, a very anti-Catholic sentiment, a very Albigensian sentiment. And Hitler was also a vegetarian. And he was also a social Darwinist. Not a vegetarian. Yes. So, yes. so, if you look at the documentation, and I can read some of it for you if you would like, if you want to be educated. I, I think I also would like to educate the audience. I have about, you said I don't understand Christianity. I'd like to, if I could ask. You don't understand Christianity. You don't but, understand but, Nazis. But now, but now you don't understand history. You were sitting there talking about how the Catholic Church was behind Hitler. And I'm trying to educate you, Eric, on why you are mistaken in saying that. And now you're disrupting me, and now you want to change the subject back to something else. No, no, I don't want to change the, the subject. I can read to you. Pincus Lapid. Let's, let's, let's go back. Let's no, no, go no, no, back. No, 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 no. You accuse the church you, of being Nazis. You accuse the Catholic Church of being pro-Nazi. Let's finish this. This is radio. We just have to take a break. We can actually come back to that subject. All right. That's fine. Yeah. Do you get, uh, Mike, uh, just stay on for a few minutes. We're going to play some... Uh, You need some schooling on Adolf Hitler. You don't even know he was vegetarian. You don't even know that I Hitler... Was I, that I, that I, that I was being sarcastic. Oh. I didn't know if you wanted to execute 
All right, no problem, no problem. But Hitler, you said he was a Christian, basically, he was Catholic, whatever. Uh, well, no, I did not say that. I said the people who carried out his orders, and this is a fact, a verifiable fact, were primarily Protestant and Catholic. Whether or not he was religious, or part of the occult, or an atheist, seems to be I a see. I see. So now you want to blame Nazism on on the soldiers or whatever on on everybody except. I didn't blame Nazism yeah, just, on, on let's read this religion. I was just making Nazism, religion. my friend, Adolf Hitler himself said. He says that we didn't. Why didn't we have the religion of the Japanese, who regard sacrifice for the fatherland as the highest good? The Mohammedan religion too would have been more compatible to us than. Christianity. And when you talk about that all oh, the people who carried out all these things were Christians, that's a lot of baloney. The, ch the churches, the, chur the churches that... You're interrupting me again. Okay. That is the churches. The churches that you're talking about, okay, did not hold the Bible. Did not hold the Old Testament. They held Mein Kampf. They held the swastika. So to say because that they were previously Christian, whatever, this is rubbish because you can't see the. Know, but I was saying it's that anti-Semitism is primarily caused by what is historically the Jewish Christianity, by the belief that's a, that that's that's a load, load of crap. crap. That's a load of crap. Have you ever heard of... Yeah. Okay, Have you ahead. ever heard of a guy named Bishop Chrysostomos? Have you ever heard of a guy named Bishop Chrysostomos? Of course not. Bishop Chrysostomos was involved in a rescue mission that was being conducted by the Eastern Orthodox Church that rescued 90,000 Jews from the Holocaust. Now, I don't know how many atheists rescued... Now... Now, you're disrupting me. You, no, you're disrupting me now. The spiritual leader, he was the spiritual leader of the Greek island of Zakynthos, and the Nazis came to him while he was the bishop there in 1943, and they told him, give us a list of all the names of the Jews in your area. He gave them a list, and when the Germans opened up the piece of paper, it was his name, and he says, you can kill me instead. He sacrificed himself for the Jewish people. Now you never hear about these stories. You always hear about, oh, the church is anti-Semitic. Oh, the, the Christians have supported Hitler. Oh, the Pope worked with Hitler. You don't even read real history. There's more it, Christians that died in the ovens with the Jews who chose to die with the Jews than you could ever dream of secularists. No. Name me, name me the secularist. Name me the secularist who for the sake of secularism, you're talking. Name me the secularist for the sake of secularism who decided to die in the oven for the Jews. It was all Christians who decided to die in the oven with four Jews. It was, you know, many priests. There was more Christians dying in the ovens than anybody else. So I don't know what you're talking about. Name me a secularist who thinks like you, Alan Bell, who decided to say, you know what, I'm, I'm counter Nazism. I, I want to die with the Jews in the ovens. Name me. There. Name me one name. Well, we're, we're not changing the subject. We're not changing the subject. We're, we're, we're simply resuming. We were talking before the commercial break. Of course, hundreds of years, one of the net results was those ovens. I don't want to focus on well, just what happened on the day the people were going. The Why not? Why do you want to ignore what the Pope did? What's wrong? Century. I'm talking about over hundreds and hundreds of years. Hundreds We're and hundreds of years. Bullying the Jews pretty badly because they believe that they killed their imaginary friend Jesus. Okay, but I don't see the point really in blaming Christians for everything. I would say the biggest source of anti-Semitism hundreds and hundreds of years. Islam. Today, but, but unfortunately, the brand of Christianity that, that you two men represent resembles Islam entirely. And, and so many that people that, tell, that argue yes. with me and say, why are you complaining about Islam? Christians are just as bad. And I say, no, but, but you prove wrong. What about secular Muslims? What about secular Muslims who denounced jihad and Islamism? What about them? Do you support them? I have the problem. Okay, 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 okay. Hold on, hold on. You said you have no problem. Let me understand you clearly. You have no problem with, let's say, 50% of Egyptians who have a problem with the Muslim Brotherhood. Why are you answering her concern? 
Well, I am. I mean, she says he has no problem with secular Muslims. So I'm trying to understand. No, that's not what she said. She said that people say Christianity is just as bad as Islam. She sticks up for Christianity and says that's not true. Well, I agree with her. Kind of proving her wrong. Okay, let me explain. Can you respond to that without taking us to Egypt? No, I agree with her. She says that Christianity is not to be blamed for everything under the sun, and we agree. But I wanted to know, you know, since this counter jihad, there are secular Muslims who counter jihad. Now, your position on secular Islam Muslims who are anti-Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt and other countries, they don't want anything to do with Al-Qaeda. They don't want anything to do with this Islamist movement. What is your position on them? Bless them. Bless them. Okay. I, I have a hard time with this, though, because how can you still belong to a state with the Prophet as your leader, as, as your person to emulate, and, and be secular? Okay. Now, it shows how much ignorant you are. Here's why. Show me in Egypt, amongst the secular Muslims who are counter-jihad, who love Israel and the Jews. You won't find any. You won't find a single one, maybe, or two. You don't find secular Muslims, even in Syria. We defend uh, Bashar al-Assad. You know, we don't, we don't like the Islamist movement in Syria, but you can't say Syrians in majority. Oh, I see. You know, one in Canada. But besides the one in Canada, how many in Egypt, percentage-wise, would you say loves Jews? I don't know. I don't think that there's a lot of love for Jews in the Islamic world. Okay. Thank you very much. So there's your secular Islam. You just said God bless the secular Muslims. Yeah, I think there's more hatred for Jews today than there was during the Holocaust. And it's coming from Islam, and we should be very, very concerned about that. You know, yeah. That is Yes, but she said, God bless the secular Muslims, even though they hate Jews. They're not hurting Jews. They hate Jews? Oh, yeah. Oh, are you kidding me? Would you would you go to Egypt? Egypt right now is under Abdel Fattah al-Sisi. Would you go to Cairo? Would you go to Cairo? You're under Fattah, Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, secular government right now. Would you go to Cairo dressed up in a kippah on your head, skull cap? Would you do that? No. Why not? Thank you very much. You just proved that you don't know anything about either Islam or secular Islam. Because secular Islam is not as what you think it is. Because God bless them immediately. As long as they don't kill Americans, God bless them. But they'll kill Jews. Oh, wait, wait a minute here. You know, I didn't know that. Well, why don't you know that? How come Americans don't know that? I love what a is doing. He hates Jews, though. Oh, I see. So it's a step in the right direction. So long. It's okay to hate Jews, but it's a step in the right direction. As long as you're not killing them, it's a step in the right direction. Excuse me, I didn't get that. What, what's, what's the step in the right direction? As long as you're not killing them, it's a step in the right direction. Eventually, maybe don't love them. Oh, you should take a trip to Tahrir Square then. They will rape you. Secular Muslims, fundamentalist Muslims, it matters nothing. They will rape you. There's many cases, rape raping women in Tahrir Square. You've seen that during the Arab Spring. And the hatred of Jews is phenomenal among secular Muslims. So no, I wouldn't say God bless them. This is the biggest dilemma. And this is the biggest dilemma in the U.S. They always say uh, radical Islam, radical Islam, radical Islam. There's only two questions here. Is Islam inceptionally radical? Or has Islam been hijacked and there are an infringed group called radical Muslims who hijacked it? Islam's radical. I think we can all agree on this. Uh, the article that I named you and that started all this is called The Radical Truth About Moderate Islam. I think there's a myth of radical Islam that's ridiculous. Islam is radical to the core. I do think you are taking us off the subject of what we came to debate on. Um, we agree on that. You had said I was ignorant about Christianity, and I wanted to ask you a question on Christianity. Would that be okay? No, you, I don't think you got my point. My point is... Who do you want to hold hands with to fight Islam? Who do you want to hold hands with? The LGBT, as Pamela Geller says, apparently you said no. The secular Muslims, as she said, apparently no. Who's left? Tell me, who's left to hold hands with to fight radical Islam or Islam itself? Uh, whatever, whichever one you want. Who? Who do you want to hold hands with? Reasonable people. Reasonable people. 
no, no, I'm not asking names. Which group? Which group in the world do you want to hold hands with? Well, who is it? I, I gave you secular Islam. You, you said, oh, well, you know, they're bad too. They hate Jews. Okay, we agreed to that. You, I said the LGBT, as Pamela Geller says. Well, you said, I don't think so. They're leftists. We agreed to that. Yeah, I've like met gay people who wanted to speak out against Islam. Of course they can speak all they want. But is that the group who you want to hold hands with to fight radical Islam? Hasn't been historically proven accurate that Christians are the only ones left who you have to hold hands with to fight radical Islam or Islam. Do you have anybody else besides Christians? Anybody who's reasonable. It doesn't matter if they're gay, or Christian, or Christian. Anybody who's reasonable. Anybody who's reasonable. Any reasonable person who wants to speak out against Islam, of course, they're going to speak out against Who? Have you ever heard of a guy named Have you ever heard of a guy named Tariq Musa? You know, you, you guys are, are sort of hijacking the conversation. No, right? we're not. No, you no, no. You said that that you would work with anybody who's reasonable. Have you ever heard of a guy named Tariq Musa? I haven't heard of him, so I can't. Say okay, Tariq Musa. Tariq Musa is a was a is an ex Muslim. He was born Muslim from uh, Pakistani. He lives in South Africa, and now he is atheist. So he's an atheist. And he doesn't like Islam. In fact, he doesn't like any religion. He hates all religion. Mm -hmm. And you may think, well, that's a reasonable person, right? Because he hates Islam and he's a reasonable guy. Tariq Musa believes in the legalization of voluntary cannibalism. So here's a guy who's against Islam, right? Okay, we can work with him. He's against Islam, ex-Muslim, atheist, and all that. But guess what? He's a social, he's a social Darwinist. It, it didn't really finish. He's a social Darwinist. And he believes in legalizing voluntary cannibalism. I, I think you're afraid of the questions. No, ask. I'm not. I'm not afraid of anything. No, we'll get to your questions. Would you, yeah. Don't so worry. My whole, my whole point is that see, you guys are saying that we should or as people should disassociate themselves from us. Listen, I really don't give a crap who disassociates themselves from us because when I started writing articles and doing videos and debates and exposing evil, I came to do one thing, and that is to fight. Evil. The Bible says that Jesus came to destroy all the works of the devil. That is what I'm here to do. I'm here to fight against evil. I am counter evil. I am counter evil. Says we can't, we, we're violence. I, listen, I am simply. I am in. I am for fighting and destroying evil. I never signed up for counter jihad and the secularist nonsense and op I, I never signed an agreement. I didn't know there was such a thing as well. He, you know, he's going to ruin the counter jihad movement because you know he's he's in this Christianity stuff and uh, and all that stuff. Uh, I never signed the memo. I didn't know there was an instruction booklet that I had to read and follow. That oh, I can't bring up Christian militancy. Exactly. Are you on psych meds? Excuse me. Are you on psych meds? I I am right now. So if you can't really deal with the issues, apparently all the names were given me, you. Yeah, I mean I, all the samples were given you. All the historic references were given you, and you're asked, and you didn't know any of that stuff. It seems that you're high on, on dope. Listen, are you high off LSD? Are you high off shrooms right now? Are, are you high off Hinduism? I mean, I mean, what kind of a what kind of a response? What kind of a remark is that? I I've, I've given you names. I've given you references. My Facebook I please. I have given you names. I have given you references. I've given you. I've given. I've given you scriptural verses. And all you can do is insult me, which means that you are you are vacuous of knowledge. I'm going to keep throwing scriptural verses at No, 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 because you said that I am not part of mainstream Christianity or I'm a fringe well, group. The and I'm giving you the scripture verses to show that what I am saying is in accordance to Christianity. Can we have just a little bit of civility? Can we have a little bit of civility? And this says we're high on dope. I mean, you're saying we're high off meds and, you're, and you start insulting and Jesus. And you and why you. Would you uh, hold on. Why would you ask what was such a stupid question? Are you in psychiatric medication? Why would you ask such a stupid it's like question? A relevant question to me when I watch a video of a guy saying women shouldn't vote. Women oh, women should vote. vote. Do you know who agrees with me? Thomas Jefferson agrees with me. Was he on psych meds? Hey, is Thomas Jefferson on psych meds? Because he also agrees with me. John Adams agrees with me. The founding fathers agree with me on women's right to vote. So if you want to argue with me on that, 
argue with Thomas. Why Jefferson. are we switching from Islam to Islam? Now, now we're talking about the women's suffrage movement. So which one do you want to talk about? You guys, please. I, yeah, yeah, you're all off at the map here. You really haven't given me a chance to talk. Let him talk. Well, at the top of the conversation, you had made the statement that I'm ignorant about Christianity. I wanted to ask you uh, a theological question about Christianity, if that was okay with you. Yeah, that's fine, but I don't have to answer it. Ted could answer it, too, if he wants. Go ahead. Either of you could answer it. So, so if, if Mary and Joseph were married, but Jesus was a virgin birth, why had they not had sex yet? And what kind of example is your God setting? Like now we're adultery with now now we're talking about Christian. I thought we we're talking about counter jihad. Now we're talking about Christian theological questions. Apparently, apparently, you know, Nick, no, no, no. I'm gonna answer your question. You accused us of being part of a fringe group, and I simply quoted you, Church Fathers. I referenced you, Church Fathers, Aquinas, Bellarmine, Augustine. I gave you Francisco Vittoria. Great Christian writers to show you that I am not that what I teach is in accordance to Christianity. The whole world now, Russia. even even the entire sh- please, I mean, this guy never shuts up. He never shuts up. I- I'm going to answer your question. So this guy never shuts up. I can't believe it. I can't believe he wants to talk about Mary and Joseph. So I'm so that's the reason why I talked about the Bible and I said you're ignorant of Christianity. Now now back now to your question. Apparently, you do not know anything about the hypostatic union. The divinity, okay, according, in accordance to Christian theology, okay, I'm going to give, give you an education here. In accordance to Christian theology, when God first made Adam and Eve, they were created to, in, uh, they were created for the purpose of partaking in the glory of God, and also to partake in the goodness of God, and to be one with God in perpetual contemplation in God. This is what Saint John of Damascus teaches in his book on. Uh, on his book on on the Orthodox faith, which is one of the foundational texts on Christianity, and so uh, the the there was something in Christianity called the hypostatic union, which is which is that because humanity fell, that humanity lost its likeness to God. It lost its image because in the Scripture it says that God was made in the image and the likeness of God. Jesus Christ is the image of the Father. This is what the scripture says, that he is the visible image of the invisible Father. So, uh, uh, by, by, by uh, Mary being conceived as a virgin, conce- being conceived uh, of the Messiah, uh, for the Messiah, and being the mother of Jesus Christ, she is also the mother of God. And in her womb, the divinity and humanity become one. So because humanity and divinity become one, God would not choose a sinner or someone who has had sex. It has to be a pure virgin because the divinity and humanity was going to be, was going to be united in her womb and such a profound, sublime uh, uh, occurrence had to have been with someone very, very special. So I would, if I were you, I would go do some edu- I would get an education on, uh, or look up the hypostatic union and read up on that. Read about the virgin birth in accordance to Saint John of Damascus. And the reason why the reason why I said you don't really know anything about Christianity is because you said that we're part of a fringe group or whatever. We're not part of mainstream Christianity or whatever, or whatever you meant. Well, you're not a step well, of being a Christian. And no, I'm not because if you read the scriptures and the church fathers, what I say is in accordance to them what they teach. But again, you said that we are an infringed group, which is false, by the way. Let me prove you false. Would you say? that the entire Orthodox Church in Russia, okay? Remember, the Russians are fighting ISIS, okay? They're fighting ISIS in Syria, okay? Many Russian soldiers are fighting ISIS in Syria, and all these people, millions of them, believe exactly what we believe. In fact, in Russia, they combat homosexuality the same way we do. What you're trying to say is this. What, 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 I, I'm going to let, let you say something, but here, here's my problem. What you're trying to say is this. Here's what I'm accusing you of. What you t- let me finish. I'll let you answer the question. What you're saying, what you say, let, gosh, let, let me finish a short sentence for Pete's sake. You're talking. Let me finish my sentence. Eric. 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 You can't be talking over me until I finish. 
Let me fish. Okay, first question. It's he. My gosh. Eric Allen Bill. Answer the question. There's, there's counter-examination here, okay? You counter-examine me. I'm going to counter-examine you, okay? Now, Russia, okay, the Orthodox, not only Russia, the Slavs, Serbia, many, many nations here agree very much with what we do regarding the LGBT, regarding fighting Islam. So they are also counter-jihadists, my friend. What you're trying to say is this. What you try to say is that only the method of the Americans should be used, and that is the secular method of the Americans, should be used to counter jihad or counter LGBT, that is. And anybody else who is not within the brand of the American way is a small fringe group. That's what I'm hearing you say. He's not answering my question. Is the entire nation of Russia a Serbia. fringe group? Slav. Is Serbia a fringe group? Is the Serbian Orthodox Church fringe? Is the Georgian Orthodox Church fringe? Is the Macedonian, yes or no. is the Macedonian Church uh, Orthodox Church fringe? Yes or no? All these Christians beating up sodomites in the streets, are they also fringe? Who, who's fringe? Yeah, Christians beating up what you're calling sodomites in the street, that's inhumane. Okay, but that's, that's your opinion. All right, let me ask you this then. Fine, then let me ask you this. Would you then think that if a bunch of Americans got really ticked off at Muslim Brotherhood making demonstrations in their street, you know, and expressing that they want America to become Muslim and all these things, and a bunch of Americans got really pissed off, carried American flags, and went there and had a fight with them, would you say these Americans were wrong? Ah, no, I got you. And, uh, the Senate, I mean, that's society, right? We all agree not, not to go crazy. No, I got you. We have a certain amount of order. And in this country, you know, there's supposed to be a way that somebody can say something really nutty that we don't like, but we don't have to go bludgeon them. We can find a way to counter their argument. All right. And again, I... the media seems to be the most effective way to do that. All right. What is your success rate, then? in countering, let's say, LGBT. You don't do anything about LGBT, but as far as, what is your success rate in, what is your success rate in countering the Islamist movement and the LGBT movement in America versus, let's say, Russia? What's your success rate? Yes. Why are you inserting LGBT in there? I have nothing to do, I'm not an LGBT. You brought up LGBT. You're saying our war against the LGBT is wrong. Okay, you said our war and our method about the LGBT is wrong. You don't agree with LGBT, apparently. Alan, are you homosexual? Is that a serious question? Well, it's a valid question. It's a valid are you, question. Are you, are you homosexual? No. Why not? Why not? But I don't have to be homosexual. But why, but why aren't why you not? homosexual, though? Why, Why aren't, aren't you homosexual? homosexual? Why am I not yeah. homosexual? Yeah. I have never really thought about that. Why not? I have to get back to that one. But Why, why aren't you homosexual? I mean, why? I mean, are, are you that close-minded? You, you want my opinion on that? Are, are you homosexual? No. No. Well, then why aren't you homosexual? Because we know it's disgusting and it's disgusting. evil and it's demonic. It's, it's diabolical. How come we answered your question? You didn't answer ours. What was your question? Are you why are you not why, homosexual? Why aren't you homosexual? Oh, okay. Um, I was born that way. Yeah, it's, I, I believe it's. I believe it's. it's I was born that way. The way you're born. I think That's a load of garbage. The way that you're. I don't think anybody can teach anybody to be a homosexual. That's a load of garbage. The Spartans did a very good. Job. If you're not inclined to be that way, it's just like you know, you're born black. You can't you know make somebody black. That's the way you're born. Please don't insult black people by equating them to sodomites. You're insulting black. Don't you're insulting black people by by equating them. So so why would you say why would you say well blacks are blacks because they're born blacks? Why wouldn't you say whites are whites because they're born whites? I can't change it. So you're 
Right. So the reason, listen, Eric, you know very well, and everyone in that radio room where, where all you guys are sitting, none of you guys are homosexual because you know very well that it's not normal. You know it's not normal. It's normal if you're born that way. You're not, there's no such thing as being born a, a sodomite. In fact, do you want me to quote to you the gay yeah, activist? Now he's defending LGBT. Now, see, now you're defending LGBT. It, it's amazing. You're supposed to be counter-jihad. But now all of a sudden you're counter-Christianity. You go against people like myself. You never go against the sodomite activists who say that homosexuals are superior to non-homosexuals. You know, you never go against Tariq Musa, who supports cannibalism, or Richard Dawkins, who supports cannibalism, or Peter Singer, who supports cannibalism. But you go against us. You're not supporting cannibalism. 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 You guys make up something. No, no, yes, he does. I wrote a whole, listen, I wrote a whole article on this, and I picked out. Found an interview between Richard Dawkins and Peter Singer where they're saying, oh yeah, I would be totally okay if somebody uh, told uh, his family, yeah, you can go ahead and eat me after I die. That's totally okay. Voluntary cannibalism. This is the, the, see, this is why I am not associated with people like you. It's amazing. You say, oh, people should not be associated with, with the shoe bots. Or you'll say that, uh, that you are associated with us because you're counter jihad. It's amazing. It, it's, it's amazing. Listen, I've never been associated with you, Eric Allen Bell. Never. You guys are just the embodiment of hate. The reason we're counter jihad is we care about human rights. And the reason why we're opposed to you care about you guys are cannibal? Really? Do you care? No. We don't have to bring up some pope or some. some it's just real simple. No, but you said something stupid. You guys are the embodiment of hate. And you're anti-human rights, and that's all there is to it. Okay, you said something that's not correct. You said that, oh, Richard Dawkins, you're making things up. You haven't heard of the interview between him and, and Peter, Singer, Peter Singer. In which they both support voluntary cannibalism. It doesn't matter. Do you support Your cannibalism? Movie doesn't matter. You should, do, you support, do you support voluntary cannibalism? Do you, do you support voluntary cannibalism? No, no, no. I, uh, now he's being smart. Sarcastic. See, see, now you're being a smart ass. Eric, 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 now you're being a smart ass. Being smart ass. Do you support voluntary cannibalism? Do you support it? Yes? Okay, so now we know that you're being sarcastic. You're being a smart ass now. Which is, which, now, which I will insist. You don't, wanna, you don't wanna answer the no, question. No, I will insist. Do you support, seriously, do you support voluntary cannibalism? Do you? You see, you they're see, having a, uh, they're having a, a, day, a laugh day over there. Because you see, the only thing you guys can do is be smart asses. The only thing you guys can do because you have because you don't want to answer the question and you really have no knowledge. Do you support voluntary cannibalism? Simple question. Of course, I love cannibals. See, there you go. So obviously, I know you don't really want to eat people. So you're so obviously you're full of shit because. Because I just showed you, and I, and I showed you there was a video between Richard Dawkins and Peter Singer. They're both supporting voluntary cannibalism. And this is why, this is why I do not support secularism. This is why I don't support secularism. Because if we start doing something with just secular position, what happens is that the whole movement gets... The demons are talking. The demons are talking now. Eric... Eric, do I have to do an exorcism on you? Do you believe that? Now, now, now this, the, hey, 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 are you done? Are you done? Are you sure you're done? Are you guys done talking? If you're going to do an exorcism, I'm all for, I haven't had an exorcism. All right. Are you guys talking? Are you guys done talking? Let me stop. That's it. Yeah. Okay. You guys are done talking. Are you sure you're, no, are you sure you're done talking? I would be curious to know if there's demons inside of me. Are you sure you're done talking? Let me know when you're hundred percent sure you're done talking. We're listening. Go ahead. Okay. Oh no no no! You're hundred percent sure you're done talking, and you're gonna interrupt. I'm never hundred percent sure of anything. And it depends on what no, you. No no no! I'll wait till well, you're that's obvious. I'm gonna stay silent till you're hundred percent sure you're gonna done talking, and you're not gonna talk over us. All right. Well, if you're gonna stay silent, that would give me a chance to talk about a few. Okay. Go ahead. Talk.
saving Christians. Now we're talking about money. Uh, he said it's uh, to CNN. It's none of their business. Where does that money go? Well, if you were smart enough, you go to rescuechristians.org and you'll find hundreds of testimonies, people from Pakistan who were saved out of slavery. In fact, in Pakistan, rescue Christians have been at the forefront, at the forefront. And those are registered cases. Those are cases very high. The highest cases globally in Pakistan of Christians who were imprisoned unfairly for blasphemy law has been handled by rescue Christians. And now you're becoming... Aren't you transparent about that financially? It's very transparent. We have all our taxes there. You can talk to Keith Davies. In fact, you should have a debate with Keith Davies. It's not on your site, like a reputable site. Well, sure, but you can take a look at rescuechristians.org. Before the case is... Let me finish. Yeah, when the, when the case is finished, it has been documented very, very well. Just you can go to Christian... Po what? Excuse me? Do you have any evidence on pocketing the money? No, I'm asking you. Why would you be asking me this question if you have no evidence of me pocketing the money? It's transparent the way other foundations are. It's very transparent. It's, it's very transparent. Okay, so you can take a look at the most prominent cases in Pakistan, and you can I can give you the cases, and you can see rescue Christians yes, are the ones. You're now you're interrupting me. You asked me a question, accusatory question, number one, that you try to say that we're pocketing money. Okay, there's no evidence whatsoever of anybody pocketing money. In fact, most of the most of my in let me finish. Most of my income comes from book sales. In fact, I don't take any money from the rescue Christians operations. Rescue Christians is rescue Christians, and the cases have been proven to the whole world. Okay, you can go to the Christian Post. You can go to the Pakistan ever, Christian Post, and you can see for yourself er, 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 those cases are very well documented. So I don't understand why you're accusing rescue Christians of pocketing money. You came along. You came. Let me finish. You came along. You came along. You came. I have. Look, I have the dialogue I had with you. You started. Eric. You started. You started. Eric. Eric. Shut your mouth. You talk too much. You came and accused us. You accused us. You said you're a fraud. I said, excuse me. What evidence do you have on fraud? You couldn't produce any evidence. When I showed you the evidence of the bombing operation I did in Bethlehem, what did you do? What did you do, you son of a bitch? You, you, you shut your mouth. I have the dialogue with you. I said, here is the United Nations records. Records from the United Nations from the year of the bombing showing that in Manger Square, there was a bomb that exploded in Manger Square. My bomb, my terrorist operation when I was Muslim, okay? And when I proved it to you and you saw the evidence, you shut your mouth. So I suggest right now you shut your mouth, such a trap, and stop accusing. I'm just asking questions. It seems to me that your hatred for Jews, once you converted to Christianity, switched over to hatred for gays. Oh, so now, now you're so changing, now the changing the subject to Sodom. You started talking you about... Keep, you keep talking... Now, listen, when, when I was talking about Sodom, you, you accused me of changing the subject. Now you're talking about Sodomites. Let me ask you a question, Eric. Have you ever heard of a guy named Golsher? Have you ever heard of a man named Golsher? No. Have, have you ever heard of Golsher? Okay, have you ever heard? Okay. Golsher was the official dry... Shh! Susan. Susan, I know that you have a stepfather from the Brady Bunch who's a sodomite, okay? So I know this is very sensitive for you, but let me finish. Golsher was the official driver for Shabhaz Bati who was a Catholic politician defending the rights of Catholic and other Christians in Pakistan, unlike you over here and over there in L.A. And they, the Taliban assassinated uh, Golsher. They, assass no, they, they assassinated Shabazz Bahti. We rescued the driver. And it was an international story, the story of Golsher. And we were the ones who took Golsher from Pakistan and flew him out of that country. So we are countering jihad by saving lives, not just media, not just information. You can go look up the story what of Golsher. What lives have you saved? Tell me, what lives have you saved? What lives have you saved? I think that's great what you do. I think, I think rescuing Christians is wonderful. Then tell your friend to shut his trap. Tell your friend to shut his trap and stop falsely accusing. And stop asking questions, do you pocket the money and all that stuff. He just shut his mouth right now, okay? 
I'll tell you what I'll do to you if I ever see you. You want me to tell you on the air what I'll do to you? Well, I know, because you're not a man. You are not a man, okay? You're a piece of dirt. That's all you are. You came in 2012, 2012, to talk about counter-jihad. I started in 1994. I was the one who exposed the Obama family. I was the one, even when, when Pamela Geller and, and what's his name, Robert, talk, Spencer. Robert Spencer talk about the, uh, uh, the, Ground, Zero the Ground Zero Mosque, Imam Faisal Abdul Rauf. I was the one who translated the, from the Arabic language who that man was, and they took my information. I was on Fox News talking about that information. I was the one who exposed many of these cases you never even heard of because you didn't speak a lick of Arabic. I'm the one who rescues Christians. I'm the one who goes there, and she is your friend? You ought to be our friend, not his friend. There's no question, Wally, that you've done a lot of important Then she should dump you out of the stu She should dump you as a friend. Why are you this guy's friend? Are you... Is it the Brady Bunch? Susan Olson. Susan Olson. Susan Olson. Why are you friends with the scum? Who are you referring to? Susan, Susan Olson. Why are you friends with this piece of scum next to who's talking? Hmm? Why are you friends with this piece of scum who's talking? I don't think he's scum. He is scum. He's accusing us of pocketing money, insinuating we're pocketing money. He's insinuated to me... Is that a noble cause, what he's doing? Attacking Christians because they're countering jihad? Uh, attacking people who advocate attacking other people, yes, I think that's very admirable. Well, that's your view. I, look, that's your view. I respect your view. It's hate speech. It's hate speech. We Listen, Eric. <laughs> Wrong. Okay, I got you. So Russia's wrong, right? The whole country? I don't, I don't think that's what anybody's saying. Who's, who's fighting ISIS? Who's fighting ISIS? Who is fighting ISIS? You or Russia? Who's fighting ISIS? Who's fighting ISIS? Who's fighting ISIS? Russia is fighting ISIS. Russia is, Russia is fighting ISIS and Russia is also beating the Sodomites up. Both, both, both. Russian, because the let me tell you something about the Russian military, Serbian military. They don't like faggots. They don't like faggots. Okay, so you think those homosexuals should be in the military? I didn't say that. Well, I'm asking you. Do you think the homosexuals should be in the military? I see no problem if somebody wants to fight for their country and they're homosexual. I don't see any reason why. It's it's you know it's amazing that if somebody goes against. Uh, faggotry and sodomites and homosexuality it's hate speech it's hatred but when have when have you people ever talked about the mass rape epidemic that is happening in the military and it's not man on woman it's man on man sodomites in the american military in the british military are raping american soldiers look at the reports look at the reports that came from the pentagon Shut Eric, up. Eric, shut your mouth, please. Hey, dumbbell, shut your mouth. The rates of military sexual trauma among men who served in the military may be as much as 15 times higher than has been previously reported. Listen, hey, I'm giving you a crimes against humanity here, and you're laughing. Largely because barriers associated with stigma, etc. And this is, shh, Eric, stop talking. This is not me saying this. This is the American Psychiatric Association. This is the psychological services that have done research in the military. This is Rand Corps, which was hired by the Pentagon. They have done estimates, 57,750 recorded incidences of homosexual rape. And there's even more cases of molestation on U.S. military. So don't give me this garbage that the sodomites are innocent. They are evil. They are wicked. This is... Do you this support is, this? Do you support? Do you support? This is what you support. This is what this is what you support. You support this crap. You support these sodomites raping people. If what you're saying is true, it is true. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What do you mean? If it's American Psychiatric Association, the Pentagon, Rand Corps, 
They're all confirming that thousands and thousands of U.S. soldiers have been raped by sodomites. We're actually, we're, we're getting close to uh, running out of time, so I want to give us a chance to kind of wrap it up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, wrap it up. Is there something in closing that you want to say that might make you guys look a little better than you look? Look a little better? My, I'm, I've been schooling you. I've been schooling the whole team of you this entire time. I've been educating all of you. The, the, the ones looking like idiots and full of crap are you guys. You can't even tell me anything about the Catholic Church and, and how they were associated with Nazis. I refuted that. And I'm showing you the crimes against humanity that the sodomites are doing. And this is what I'm going to say to you in closing. You say that you are associated with us somehow because of the counter-jihadism. We were never associated with you. When I joined this movement, I came to fight evil. Not to be a part of some group of looney tunes called counter jihad i'm here to fight evil and the problem with having a secular position is that it becomes inundated with sodomites and with and with fat slobs like yourselves if you want to fight evil go hang yourself excuse me now you're supporting suicide so now you have confirmed to me how much of a wicked son of a bitch you are by supporting suicide this is the reason why this is the reason why the Catholic Church put people like you to death. This is the reason why the Catholic Church used to burn pieces of crap, pieces of garbage like you at the stake. Because you are pro death. You are not pro life. You are not pro human. You are anti human. You are anti human. Anti human. Wait a minute, what why why are you guys bailing out? Go ahead. Go ahead. I hope you do, Eric Albell. So, talk away. Bark away. Talk all you want about us. Now, why are you bailing out? I thought we had a debate for two to three hours here. Oh, we, we didn't know that. Go ahead, tell something we don't know. Yeah, absolutely. It's about all we can agree uh, on. Guys, where can people go to get information about you? Shoebot.com. Thank you for promoting the website that Eric Allen Bell hates so much. S-H-O-E-B-A-T.com. Oh, I'm, I'm glad to send people there. Absolutely. Send them, away. Send them over, Eric. Send them over. And educating you. Yeah, we'll do. I, I hope you do better next time. Absolutely. And there will be a next time. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. All right. <laughs> oh, <Joe. laughs> uh, that was a massacre. <laughs>